There are two ways of joining electrical circuits or electrical components in a circuit, and we can join them in series and in parallel. Some circuits have both series and parallel parts, but what we're going to look at for this video is, sorry, for this slide is series circuits or a series circuit. Here is a short video of one I put together the other day. So you can see that all the components in this series circuit are in a single pathway or in a single loop. They're all joined, and if any one of those was taken out, then the circuit wouldn't work. There's a photograph of the circuit, and on the left-hand side is our diagram, our circuit diagram. As you can imagine, it's much simpler to work with our diagram, because it's uh, a simpler way of showing a particular circuit. So let's get stuck in. Firstly, in terms of our series circuit, the current through each component is the same. So if we look in this circuit here, we've got two components, each one of those, we've got three in fact, but we're looking at the lamps. Those are the two components. And if we have 0.3 amps shown by the ammeter, that current is gonna be the same in all parts of the circuit and also going through the two components. So they would light with equal brightness, as you may have noticed on that little short video. The second thing to remember is that the potential difference or voltage of the power supply is shared between the components. So the potential difference is shared between the components. And in our component in our circuit here, the components are the lamps. So imagine we had nine volts being supplied by the power supply. Each one of these would take a share, and because the two bulbs are the same or identical in this case, each bulb would show a potential difference of 4.5 volts. 4.5 volts because the potential difference is shared. If we were to look at the potential difference across the two, you would in fact see a potential difference across the two of nine volts because we would add those two potential differences up. However, we need to know that the potential difference is shared between the two components. We just rearrange that a little bit. There we go, 4.5 volts each. That's our second point we need to remember. The third point is that the total resistance in the circuit is the sum of the separate components. In other words, we have to add up the, t the resistance of the separate components. Imagine we call the first one there R1, and we could give that a value, for example, of 10 ohms. The second one, just for simplicity, we'll give it 10 ohms as well. That means the total resistance, written as R total, is R1 plus R2. And in this case, very simply, it's 10 plus 10. So the total resistance is 20 ohms. That funny sign there is the sign for ohms. Greek letter, Greek letter omega. So these three points are very important to remember for our series circuit, and you must make sure you do remember those for your exam. Here we have a parallel circuit, and you'll notice in the parallel circuit there are different branches, different pathways for the electricity to flow down. And the first thing we need to remember about our parallel circuit is that the potential difference across each component is the same. Potential difference across each component is the same. So if we gave the same example as we had last time, in other words, nine volts, and we measured the voltage across, that was a bit messy. If we measure the voltage across each lamp or each component, doesn't have to be a lamp, that would also be nine volts. Okay, so we can make a note of that there, nine volts across each component. That's the first rule. Now the second rule is that the total current through the whole circuit is the sum of the currents through the separate components. Total current is the sum of the currents through the separate separate components. Now what does that mean? Well, let's take another example of a value of, cur of current. We'll call that 0 0.4 amps traveling in that direction. Now if we look at the current going through each component, the current branches off, and each one, each branch will have a current of 0 0.2 amps. As long as those components have the same resistance, they're going to share the current, and in this case, the same current will flow through both of those branches. On the other side, the current will join from each branch, and we'll go back to 0 0.4 amps. So this is what we mean by that second bullet point there. Now the third one is very slightly trickier, but what we're saying is that the total resistance of the circuit, or sorry, the total resistance of the two resistors is less than the resistance of the smallest individual resistor. So let's give the first one a resistance of 45 ohms, and the second one we'll call it the same resistance. So the total resistance is less than the resistance of the smallest 
individual resistor. Well, what does that mean? Well, if we want the total resistance in the circuit, the smallest one in this case is 45. They're both the same, but okay, 45 ohms. So the total resistance in the circuit will be less than 45 ohms. That's the math symbol for less than, I'm sure you know. Total resistance will be less than 45. Now, if we had another circuit, for example, where R1 or the first resistor was 45 and the second resistor was 10, that means the total resistance in that circuit would be less than the smallest one, which is less than 10 ohms. Okay, so that's all we need to know about that. Now, there is a way of calculating that. We could actually use an equation if you were curious as to how that works. And that would be the equation that looks like this. It says one over R1, sorry, one over R total. One over R total is the same as, is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2. And if you put in the numbers for that, you could actually, actually calculate a value. Your teacher may have done this with you, but actually you don't need it for this specification. You just need to know the rule that's on the screen there. Okay, so these three points are very important for parallel circuits. Let's put the ohm sign in there. Now, for the last part of this video, this is a bit of a challenge. Okay, so it's a bit of a challenge. We're going to have a go at working out some currents using all the stuff we've learned to date so far, including a formula or an equation from a previous video. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to calculate the current through the three ammeters. So calculate the current through A1, A2, and A3. So you can pause here and give that a go. If you're not too sure, you can maybe try after you've seen this clue. So the clue is we do need to use an equation, and that's the equation that says V equals IR, and we would need to rearrange the equation, but we would use that to work out the value for A1 and A2. Okay, so if that clue helps, you can now pause again and give that a go. So if, you're, if you want to check your answer or you weren't feeling too confident, let's go through it together. A1, we would use V equals IR, but we're not trying to work out potential difference, the voltage. We're trying to work out the current. So we'd rearrange to have I equals V over R. Now, what is the value for V? Well, as we mentioned already in this video, the potential difference is the same for all branches. So that would be 18 as a potential difference. So it would be I equals V over R, and V in this case then would be 18, divided by the resistance of 60, and that gives an answer of 0.3 amps. Now for A2, how, how would we do that? Well, we would use the same equation. That's the answer for A1. For A2, let's do it in a different color just because we can. Remember the voltage or the potential difference is the same in the branches, so we've got 18 volts divided by the resistance. Now, that would be 18, but what's the resistance? Well, remember that that second branch there, that's the series part of the circuit. So we've got a series part of the circuit in this parallel circuit. Okay, because those two are in a line, we would say that's a series part. So how do we work out the resistance? Well, if you remember back from the previous couple of slides, the total resistance is R1 plus R2, and that's just a simple case of 40 ohms. And if we do that on a calculator quickly, let's bang that out. What is it? That's 0 0.45 amps. So A2 is 0 0.45 amps. And then A3, hopefully this is a slightly easier calculation once we've done that. But we know that the current through A1, as we've just worked out, is 0 0.3 amps. The current through A2 we've just worked out 0.45. So to work out A3, it's just a case of adding those two together, and we would get a value of 0 0.75. So we add A1 plus A2, that gives 0 0.75 amps. Okay, so that was a bit of a challenge, but um, hopefully if you've gone through it step by step, you uh, quite understand how to do this now. So that's it for the video for today. We've looked at the features of series and parallel circuits. You must remember those rules that we've talked about. And here's an example of a calculation that you might be able to, or might be asked to do, or partly asked to do in the exam. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.